on that area. Oh, just unbelievable, Chuck. And you mentioned something about Minnesota's team when you described them. You said tough. I want to tell you what, they look like they went to the Jack LaLanne School of Basketball. They may not win the national title, but a couple of them look like they could go for the heavyweight title. They were very tough inside. They had some shooters. They were well coached. But it was kind of one of those calm Georgia Tech two-point wins that we've all become used to. Talk to the players who are trying to put their finger on just what this team has. They don't know, but do you think they're happy? Listen. This is the biggest highlight of, of my basketball career. You know, um, it's been really frustrating the last three years to be on some really talented teams and not be able to fulfill. Uh, last year, I thought we had a really good shot at, at maybe being in this position, but, you know, we had guys playing our position. We had Tommy Hammonds. He had to play center. We had some uh, junior college players trying to adjust. And I think the biggest thing now is that we, we just are a close team. You always have a, a chance of a lifetime to go to Final Four. You watch other teams play when you're younger. If you lose early, you watch the you know, game on TV. I think going there this year really makes you know all the hard work in the off season last spring feel good. As a freshman coming in in the beginning of the season, if someone told you you would go to the Final Four, what would you have said? I said, you know, you know, I have a lot of confidence in myself, but I wouldn't say we was going to the Final Four. I, I would, you know, people would just laugh, but I would say, you know, it's a chance. You know, you never know. You know what I mean? And we just, you know, a lot of people doubt us all year, but we knew we could do it. I'll tell you what, it's going to be dangerous when Kenny Anderson fills out. You know, you look at this team, and when you're covering any team, you want them to naturally go, whether it's Georgia, Georgia State, or Morehouse, or any other team in our metropolitan area that is a Nielsen or Arbitron family. We want them to go all the way. So, But with this team towards the end, you almost yawn until you get to the last 30 seconds because you have a feeling that this team is just going to pull it out. They cannot put their finger on it. Much more for you coming up in sports and on Sports Final. Chuck, this has been an enjoyable week of basketball. Great teams here, Syracuse, Minnesota, Michigan State, and Georgia Tech's in the Final Four. It is amazing. We will see you later. Back All to right, you. Stu, we'll see you tonight on Sports Final. And Stu will be joining us live tonight on Sports Final from down in New Orleans as we'll re recap the Jackets' victory. And of course now, Georgia Tech next week in Denver on Saturday in the Final Four will take on the winner of the UNLV Loyola Marymount contest. And we'll let you know a little bit later on in sports just who has won that game. What a great day for a lot of alumni and fans. Oh, huh? no kidding. There are a lot of people in this, uh, in this area that even you know just love Georgia Tech right. basketball yeah All watch right. this I'm thriller good evening it's been a tough week for tech fans with bad hearts and weak stomachs but for those who like excitement it's been the best week ever the rambling wreck just keeps on rolling and the next stop is Denver Randy Waters is here with highlights of Tech's win well really Carmen I think it's really hard for those of us who don't have the talent to play that game to appreciate just what those words mean to those kids are magic words to basketball players the final four from the time they're old enough to heave one up to the hoop final four they dream of going it's reality finally for a team from Georgia Tech the Jackets lethal weapon three Shot down the Gophers from Minnesota this afternoon. Scott Anderson and Oliver combined for 89 of Tech's 93 points. Now, in the final, final <laughs> wrenching moments, Kenny Anderson with Tech up 93-91, missed one from the line. Time running out. Minnesota had a chance to win with a three, to tie with a two. Greg Lynch goes for the three. It is short, and Georgia Tech goes to the Final Four for the first time in its history. Now, Art Ekman is live at the Superdome in New Orleans, where he's been there all week long with Georgia Tech. They survived yet another scare, but these kids don't scare easily, do they, Art? They certainly don't, Randy. Uh, if the Jackets keep this type of play up throughout their career, their fans will show up with four minutes left in the game and feel that they've got the essence of the game in tow. Today's exhausting game on the Jackets took a lot out of them, but the dreams of the Final Four appearance were certainly evident. Uh, it hasn't hit me yet. Uh, if you say, why are you so calm? I said, well, I don't know what to think right now. Because I just remember watching a lot of Final Fours on TV as being a youngster and then actually going to be playing and then people going to be watching me now. It, it feels great. Randy will have a lot more coming up later in sports. Uh, the locker room reaction of this fine team as they prepare now mentally for the Final Four, if not physically. And it is a tough mental preparation, Art. Do you think they can uh, get back on their feet and get back on their game in that short time? Uh, Art's, 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 Art's going to the locker room. Yeah, okay, if, if you're wondering, Tech does not return home until uh, tomorrow morning. They're not coming in tonight. They're not coming to the airport tonight. They're not home until tomorrow morning because I know a lot of people like to go out there and greet them. Oh, of course back. they do. Won't be back until... Crimmins also told me today that it was indeed that, but most of his thoughts today were uh, concerning his late father who passed away from cancer a couple of months ago and how his father would have loved to have been in New Orleans and then gone on to Denver. So Bobby, in essence, is... Uh, devoting the tournament to him but when the clock finally ticked down to those final few seconds it was a marvelous moment 
It was a day that will best be remembered for Lethal Weapon 3. Yeah, the only thing is just keep going and hopefully, you know, we can just keep staying together. As long as we stay together, I feel real confident that we can win it all. Could you have imagined a year ago at this time when you're hanging out in New York City playing with a bunch of kids that you would someday be in the Final Four? No, nah, I just feel good right now. You know, last year I was joking with Coach. I said, I told you so after the guy I told you because when they was recruiting me, I made a silly comment in the paper in New York that, uh, we, that we was going to go to the Final Four. It's back to Minneapolis for the Gophers, on to Denver for the Jackets. You've seen this Tech team. How far can they go? They can go very far. They, they match up with us very well. We're two similar teams. And a team like that is hard to play against because they, have, they can hit you in so many different areas. And I, I think they can uh, win it all, and good luck to them. What a great scene of the 200 reporters that are here. All of the focus has been on the Lethal Weapon 3, Oliver, Scott, and Anderson, and how these guys seem to just uh, know exactly what the other is going to do. That's the theme that you're going to hear cruising into Denver. Tomorrow, the Jackets come home at 1225, Delta Charter 906, so if you want to go to the airport, you've got that opportunity to do so. Reporting from the Louisiana Superdome, I'm Jeff Hullinger, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Back to you, Bill, in Atlanta. Thank you very much, Jeff. What a great, great event that was. Now, the final four stacks up this way. Next Saturday, right here on Channel 5, the first game will be Duke against Arkansas. That will be a 543 tip-off, Duke against Arkansas, followed about 30 minutes later by Georgia Tech against the running Rebels of Jerry Tarkanian, UNLV, the Las Vegas team against Georgia Tech. Joins us live from outside the Superdome in New Orleans. Art? Well, Randy, I've thought all along that the uh, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets would be a good tournament team because of their ability to stay close in any game and their proven ability to play well under pressure down the stretch. The Jackets did not show the post-game jubilation that they did against Michigan State. Uh, there were smiles and huggings and the pats on the back, of course, but in the locker room, there was more of a laid-back feeling of relief this time around. Pride, yes, but they were emotionally and physically drained. They took it to us first half. They just wanted it more than we did. But I felt the same way I felt walking off the court in Knoxville against LSU. We were only down um, two points today. Uh, then we were down one point. And the kids, the young men, they met the challenge. Right? I said, we got to put everything on the line here. We just didn't want it early on. I think we a little lack of days ago. I think second half, when we got a lead, they caught up, they got a lead. But down the stretch, like even all year, we, we don't give up on each other. The coach don't give up on us. It went down to the wire. I think that was good for us to be able to pull out. I think we've already proven that we are a good team. We're not a great team yet. Um, hopefully, after we win a championship, we'll be a great team. Uh -huh. You were kidding with Bobby Crimmins after the game, but I told you so, I told you so. Yeah, he said, uh, you're blowing me smoke yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I told him, I made a, you know, a silly uh, comment in the paper in New York when I was getting recruited that I was going to take him to the Final Four. I didn't, you know, I didn't beat it. You know, I just said it. But... I'm here. <laughs> the team will actually stay here in New Orleans tonight before coming back and arriving in Atlanta midday on Delta Airlines. Uh, this will be our final report from the Super Bowl, the Superdome, I should say, uh, as we uh, move our location tonight at 11 o'clock over to the team hotel and where Bobby Cremens and Brian Oliver have agreed to join us there, Randy, and get some of their thoughts. Maybe they've had some time to, to clear the cobwebs, clear the excitement away, and, and talk to us about that final four appearance coming up in Denver. Art, right, you've been around uh, NCAA tournaments uh, quite a few times. You've seen uh, sometimes kids enjoy the ride, and also sometimes you see teams under so much pressure that uh, they are expected to win, especially highly ranked teams. Do you think Georgia Tech's kids are enjoying the ride, or do you think the pressure is getting to them? I do not think the pressure gets to this team. I think they have so much fun playing the game of basketball that, that they, they are having fun. I don't think pressure is an element that's going to disturb Tech's game. I think it'll be more endurance and more physical ability. Brian Oliver's injury has worsened with each game. Uh, it's been a situation where Kenny Anderson had to carry the load against Michigan State. Dennis Scott came to the forefront uh, today and hit some key three-pointers. But if one of those two, they have their game off and the, and the rest of the team is not physically ready, I think they'll be emotionally prepared for this game and I don't think they'll be too high. I think they're the right kind of team to play in a tournament. And, of course, a lot depends on your competition. But uh, that ability to stay close with this club and different people coming through at different times certainly is a great attribute when you get into a tournament. Okay, thanks, Art. Speaking of the competition,